Welcome to Miss Lovedell's video on the structure of DNA. During this video, you will find out about four scientists whose work helped us understand the DNA molecule. You will hear about the basic structure of DNA and find out how DNA can be copied. Make sure you have your supplies before we get started. You need a science notebook, your pencil, and some colored pencils. So, what is DNA? Well, it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So that's where we get the D, the N, and the A. And it's the molecule that chromosomes and genes are made of. We know that the functions of DNA are to give the instructions to the cell for building and maintaining everything that the cell does. In addition, DNA needs to be able to be copied many times without mistakes. Because what would a mistake in your DNA be? A mutation, right? So we definitely don't want that to be going on too often. The structure of DNA is based on a subunit called the nucleotide. And a nucleotide has three types of molecules. A phosphate molecule, a sugar molecule, and a nitrogenous base molecule. So phosphate, the phosphate molecule in this model of DNA is this little circle right here. All of these would represent the phosphate molecules. The sugar molecules are connecting the phosphates together. So these are all sugar molecules right here. And the nitrogenous base molecules are the rungs of the ladder. So these are all nitrogenous bases. So let's talk about nitrogenous bases a little bit. These are the genetic code. The sequence of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine are what makes up your genetic code. And you can see here with these pictures that the artist has drawn of a nucleotide that each nitrogenous base has a specific shape. And that's on purpose because in real life, the molecules that are the nitrogenous bases have a unique shape and they fit together like puzzle pieces. And thiamine fits with adenine, but it does not fit with cytosine or guanine, and vice versa. How are those Cornell notes coming along? Press pause if you need to. So there are a few scientists who I'd like to talk about that contributed to our understanding of the DNA molecule. So let's talk about Chargoff first. Chargoff did some chemical analysis of DNA molecules in certain cells, and he found that adenine and thymine always equaled each other. They were always present in the same amounts. And guanine and cytosine were also always present in the same amount. Rosalind Franklin was the first to make an image of the DNA molecule using a technique called X-ray diffraction. And this suggested that DNA had a spiral shape. And then lastly, we have James Watson and Francis Crick. And they were able to use their work and the work of the other scientists to create a three-dimensional mo model of the DNA molecule that shows this double helix structure. So a lot of times we hear about DNA being called a twisted spiral or a ladder. The reason that we have that idea is that the sides of the ladder will be the DNA backbone. So that's your phosphate and your sugar molecules. And the rungs of the ladder are the DNA base pairs. And this idea or this shape is referred to as the double helix. And that's kind of the shape that we recognize as the basic shape of the DNA molecule. So how are those Cornell notes coming along? Press pause if you need to. So let's talk a little bit more about the DNA's structure. There are two basic parts, the DNA backbone, which is the two sides of the ladder, and you can see those going by here. And they are made of a sugar molecule, which looks like is being represented by these little green things going by. And then the phosphate molecule, which are these little red sections right here. The rungs of the ladder are the base pairs. And in this model, they're being represented by these features right here connecting the two sides of the ladder. So how do we make a copy of our DNA? Well, copying is also called replication, and it's based on the idea that bases fit together with each other. So cytosine is always going to fit together with guanine, and we call this complementary base pairs. And if we remember that 
adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with cytosine, then we can figure out the complementary sequence for any group of base pairs. So for example, if we had CGAC, what would the complementary base pair sequence be for that string of bases? Jot that down in your notes and see what you come up with. If you came up with GCTG, then you're right. Good job. So we started off with C, then G, A, and C. And we can see that the complementary string of DNA would be G, C, T, and G, because those bases fit together with each other. So let's try another one. What would the complementary sequence be for T, C, A, A, G, C? Press pause and write that down in your notes. If you came up with A, G, T, T, C, G, then you're right. Good job. Make sure you've got that idea in your notes because it's a pretty important concept. Press pause if you need to. So what are the steps in making copies of the DNA molecule now that we understand the idea of complementary base pairs? Well, first of all, this complicated double helix has to be unwound and unzipped. That just means that a special enzyme comes in and splits this molecule apart right here at the bases. So one half of the DNA string is over here and the other half of the DNA string is over here. And then these bases are used as a pattern for the new strand of DNA. The next step is a special enzyme comes along and it adds nucleotides onto the string of DNA and uses this side of the DNA and this side of the DNA as the pattern for which nucleotides go where. And this creates two exact copies of the DNA strand. And you end up with one side of the new DNA strand being old DNA, so this is the old strand, and then the other side of the DNA strand being the new DNA. But they're both exact copies of each other. So let's watch this little video that shows us DNA replication in action. DNA replication is defined as the process by which an organism's original DNA is used as a template for the production of a new complementary DNA strand. An enzyme called helicase unwinds the original DNA's double helix, creating a replication fork. Next, an enzyme named DNA polymerase 3 works down the leading strand and up the lagging strand of the replication fork, synthesizing two new strands of DNA by taking free nucleotides and pairing them with the complementary bases on the original DNA template. The process of DNA replication is described as semi-conservative because the two copies of DNA produced each contain one strand of the original DNA and one entirely new DNA strand. Take a second to check out your Cornell notes and make sure you got them up to date. So to review really quickly, in this video you found out about nitrogenous bases and some of the scientists who worked on the structure of DNA. You know about the concept of the double helix, how to sequence DNA, and how DNA replicates. Make sure you have these vocabulary words in your notes and a little bit of information about these four scientists. And don't forget your three R's. Review your notes. Make sure they make sense. Reflect on each page of the notes with a 30-word summary, an illustration, or a graphic organizer. And respond to these two questions. Number one, which of the following is not part of a nucleotide? And number two, what would the complementary strand of DNA be for the sequences of bases below? Thanks for watching, and thanks to these people for their information and their website resources.